If you're watching this video, it's because you want to know if you should buy the Micro PA50 power amplifier. Um, it's available on uh, AliExpress. Uh, usually costs around $150 to $175. Uh, looks like a good deal. And it seems like the perfect candidate for an amplifier to hook up to your IC705, like I have it hooked up right here. So let's just go over a couple things about the Micro PA50 before you go ahead and purchase it. Now, it does actually have a few minor issues, a few minor problems. Um, I'm gonna kind of demonstrate the first one. I've already fixed the major issue, but I can demonstrate what it does. Um, and if I just go ahead and I've got this fed into my antenna tutor is set up for 40 meters, but this is on 20 meters. So it's into a mismatched load. And if you run it into a mismatched load, boom, it shuts itself off. That's, that's how this behaves. That's it. It shuts off and it sits there and beeps. And then you have to go like that. Now, what I actually did was I, oh, I overpowered it. It was putting out 66 Watts or something like that. And it's designed to shut itself off at 50 Watts. You should not, defeat that setting. There is a way to defeat it, but you shouldn't do that. But it'll also do that when it reads the SWR is too high. The problem with this amplifier is that when it comes to you, it is very likely that it will read an SWR that is higher than it really is. Usually about a half, it's about 0.5 to maybe 1.0 higher than it actually is. And the problem with that is that a lot of us run resonant antennas that probably run about 1.5 to 1.7 SWR. People make too big of a deal out of SWR. If it's a below two to one, it doesn't really matter. And this amplifier would be a lot more useful if it operated in a way that recognized that that's the case. So you need it to at least work at two, below two to one SWR. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna take this apart. I'm gonna show you how to fix the SWR issue with the Micro PA50. A couple things that I really like about this amplifier as I'm taking it apart is that it's small in form factor, right? It's not a giant heat sink. It's obviously that, obvious that they understood the assignment for a portable operator, which is that it needs to be able to fit in your pack so it can't have a bunch of sharp heat sink fins on the outside of it that are gonna cut the nylon in your pack and it just needs to fit in there. It's not too heavy. This amplifier plus the 705 is, mm, it's at least a few ounces lighter than my FD891 here. Um, it's not a lot lighter. It's not enough to really be super impressive, but you know, it works. So much thanks to G4BUD on the Soda Reflector website who actually did the homework to figure out how to do this. I was not patient enough to actually look at this SWR schematic and pick apart what you need to do to fix this amplifier. But I, once he posted a schematic of how this works, then it became, then I was able to figure it out. So if you look here at this binocular core right here in the amplifier, it's kind of hard to get a close up on this, but if there's this binocular core that is right here with coils on both sides of it. And I'm gonna grab my other camera and I'm gonna bring it up close to this so you can see exactly what it is I did to make this amplifier function properly or at least become something I could live with in the back country because that was the big problem with this amplifier. It was like, it would just shut off. It would just randomly just beep at you and shut off and it was like, I mean, I mean, if you were trying to program something, if you were trying to program something to be annoying to use, that's exactly what you would do. And that's kind of typical of what I see frequently from a lot of the um, Chinese companies. What I really like about this amplifier is that it uses very, very cheap and affordable IRF 530, is it IRF 530? Yeah, IRF 530 transistors. Um, these guys right here. And IRF 530s are like, they're this bog standard power transistor. And it was a French ham, I think. It was a, uh, it was another amateur radio operator who just, he was challenging himself to see if he could build an amplifier from these. And he did. But then the, the, a lot of these Chinese companies that have taken this design and they've put it in a whole bunch of different iterations of power amplifiers. Um, it does have for those of you who are worried about it, who want to be um, pedantic, you, yes, it has a filter section on the output here. It does seem to work. All right, let's take a look. 
So if you look right here, there are two resistors. There is the, for the, for the SWR meter, there are two resistors. There is the send resistor that I'm putting out with my oscilloscope probe right here. And um, there's a couple different ways to do this. So you could go with these, you could met, you can, um, here's the send resistor. It's a 49 ohm resistor. That's a quarter watt. And then here's a 49 quarter watt return resistor. And what I did is I used um, the insight that I got from G4BUD um, to recognize that if I um, basically slug the detector here, I, I, I basically make the detector less sensitive than it was designed to be, then I could get it to stop reading erroneously high SWRs and then I could get this thing to function for me. So what I did is, um, what G4BUD did is he took this tiny little 10K resistor here and he soldered another 10K resistor on top of it. Um, and that, that worked. Um, I didn't want to order and wait for this tiny little 10K resistor. Plus I didn't want to have to solder it, but I have a whole bunch of quarter watt through hole resistors sitting in my parts inventory from when I used to play with this stuff all the time in the nineties. So I went ahead and experimented with different values of quarter watt resistors until I figured out that a 33 ohm resistor, orange, orange, black, if I soldered a 33 ohm resistor across the return resistor, which is R36, it's the one on the left side if you're looking at the bottom left of the amp, if I did that, then I could get it to behave itself. And that's, that's how I got this amp to work. And I haven't let the smoke out of it yet. I haven't blown it up yet, so I think I'm doing okay. Um, but you know what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to go ahead and hook this up to the IC705 and then we'll put it into the scope and into a dummy load and I'll show you with the power meter how, um, how this amplifier performs, at least with the sine wave and maybe a little bit of a SSB. As you can see on the scope, if you look closely, I got about 44.2 volts peak to peak with, a, with CW coming out of this. Um, and that's on, that's just from the, uh, that's for the radio itself. So if I just go to the radio without the amplifier, max transmit power, five watts, we get 44 volts peak to peak, which kind of tracks, right? 44 volts into 50 ohms. If you do the, do the math, you're going to get around that five watts by the time you do your RMS and all that calculation, which I'm not going to waste your time with. All right, so let's go ahead and turn the amplifier on. And I might overload this. We'll see, because it's probably not going to like a full sine wave. Yeah, it's not going to like that. So then, and that's one thing there, right? Okay, so five volt, a uh, five watt CW signal into the amplifier overloads it. It doesn't like it. So let's go ahead and go into the function menu in my IC705. If you own one, you already know how to do that. Two and a half watts. Let's see what two and a half watts gets us on a CW signal. Right, there you go. You can see that it's, uh, So we're at about 109, 120 volts peak to peak. But you can definitely set uh, to see the amplifier doing its job. Its power meter says it's around 30 or 40 watts. I don't really fully trust the power meter on this thing. Um, reading a 1.0 SWR as it should be. All right, cool. So it's amplifying. The amplifier is amplifying. It is not freaking out. Fantastic. The thing I haven't mentioned yet while talking about this is the noise factor. This thing sounds like a little hair dryer. It's not ideal for use inside. Like if you're inside the shack, you're gonna notice, but I think it's the perfect compromise for an amplifier that you're gonna take out into the field because I would rather have a small loud fan than a big heavy heat sink if I'm going out in the field. So does this amplify? It amplifies. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna go ahead and try this in single sideband mode just for your edification, just so that you um, don't feel like you got cheated out of, I know most of you are gonna be on single sideband, including me, by the way, including me. So let's, we're somewhere in the 20 meter band, still on a dummy load, and let me switch my radio from CW over to single sideband. Upper sideband, thank you very much. And Kilo Delta 7, Quebec Oscar Whiskey, CQ, CQ to nobody. And you can see, even it's interesting if you watch how this operates on single sideband you can see that there's a lot the voltage peaks don't go nearly as high which should give you some insight into why single sideband doesn't propagate as far 
aside from the larger bandwidth, um, it's hard for you to even like pin the meter for very long. So I've noticed on single sideband, you can kind of get away with doing a little bit more power out of the radio. So I'm gonna switch the radio to five watts, see what I get. So this is with five watts out on the radio and you can see a little bit more voltage peak on that guy. But yeah, it's gonna peak around 50 watts on single sideband. Does the amplifier work? I've used it in an antenna. I seem to get QSOs with it. Um, whether those are QSOs I would have made anyway on 10 watts, I can't tell you. But you know, here we are. This is, this, is, this is where we're at. So let me go ahead and turn off the amplifier. So this is single sideband with the amplifier turned off and you can see what the voltage peak levels are on the oscilloscope. And then I'm gonna go ahead and turn the amplifier on. All right, this is single sideband with the amplifier on. So there you go, you can tell the difference. Now keep in mind that this oscilloscope is a linear display. So it's linear, meaning it's not gonna give you an idea of what your S unit display would be. This is only gonna be one or two S units, people. So unless what you're trying to do is just get over somebody's noise floor, which it's very useful for, then it's not gonna make your signal that much louder, right? It's not gonna make your rag chew go that much better, but it will work for making contacts with people in urban areas who probably have a fairly high noise floor because that one S unit can make all the difference. But there you go. So let's just look at that one more time. This is SSB five watts with the amplifier turned off. This is SSB uh, somewhere between 40 and 50 watts. We'll just say 50 watts with the amplifier turned off on and that is the difference on a linear scale so overall though the um, final verdict on this amplifier would i recommend this amplifier should you purchase this amplifier and my answer for that is probably i'm going to give this amp i'm, I'm going to tell you a qualified yes a qualified yes you should consider purchasing this amplifier if you want a project this is a project amplifier. So if you're somebody who is comfortable getting a wrench, taking it apart, and you're comfortable with a soldering iron, because you need to be comfortable with a soldering iron. If you're comfortable with a soldering iron and an Allen wrench, yeah, absolutely get this amplifier. Um, again, G4BUD and the other people on the uh, Soda Reflector Forum who helped us figure this out, they, thank you everybody, by the way, who, who did that, we've all come together we know how to make this amplifier work for us. But unless you're comfortable soldering, unless you're comfortable taking things apart and tinkering, yeah, don't buy this amplifier. It's not gonna work for you unless you can get it to have the most pristine of SWRs, and that is not possible. So there's a small chance this amplifier is gonna fail on me because of how I've slugged it, but everything else about this amplifier I like. Everything else that people have said that they like about this amplifier, I like too. It doesn't need a control cable because it has RF sense. Um, it has full break-in. If you want to use full break-in for CW, you can set the um, time delay on it to make it work really well. Um, I'll let other people who have cameras that will sync up with the OLED display on this because this is going to be horrible for you to look at. I'm not going to go through the settings on this amplifier. You can figure it out. It's not that hard. It just involves how many button presses you how many times you push this white button and you'll have to experiment with that. It turns on immediately when you plug it in. It doesn't have a power on off switch. Um, it's pretty basic. It's very much like a lot of this stuff that comes from somewhereville, China. That's what I kind of say, somewhereville, China, right? It, it's probably somewhere that's across the street from the factories that make the displays and all the microcontrollers that they need to put these together. It's pretty impressive what they, these companies in China can come up with. Um, I mean, I, I, I got to give credit where credit is due. Uh, so you just want a 50 watt amplifier to bring with you to make QSOs. I think this will do it. It'll make your 705 just a little bit more powerful, but you have to be willing to tinker.